Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers and Data Engineering. My name is Gyanendra and this is part 6 of Azure tutorial series. In this video we are going to talk about the difference between triggers in Azure Data Factory. So if you are watching this video for the first time, I would highly recommend to watch the previous videos on this Azure tutorial series. In previous video, we have discussed about the triggers in Azure Data Factory, what are the triggers available and what are the basic types. Also in previous videos, we have discussed about creating your first pipeline and provisioning your Azure Data Factory. So uh, let's get started with the difference between available triggers in Azure Data Factory. All right, so as in previous video, we discussed these are the four types of triggers which are available in Azure Data Factory as of now. And we have uh, discussed in detail in the previous video and discussed uh, and sh in a, we saw them live on the Azure Data Factory as well. So what we are going to do right now, we are going to discuss about the difference between these triggers. All right, so um, the last four triggers, uh, sorry, the last two triggers that you can see here is storage account event triggers and the custom event triggers. Both works alike, right? So that's why in difference, I have uh, put them in a category of event based triggers. Okay, so don't be confused with that. Uh, <clears throat> so starting with the schedule trigger. So as we discussed, scheduled triggers are the basic triggers which are available in Azure Data Factory. And these triggers can execute a pipeline on a wall clock schedule. So it is simply like an alarm. We are setting up an alarm and whenever that time hit, uh, like a particular day, a particular like time of a day or maybe weekday or anything, on that situation, this schedule trigger will execute a pipeline. All right. However, if you talk about a tumbling window trigger, it executes a pipeline on a periodic interval and retains the pipeline state. Okay. So what does it mean? What it is trying to say here, instead of scheduling it only for the future time, what we can do here, we can set it up to execute a pipeline on a periodic level. So maybe on every 15 minute or maybe uh, every day on a specific time and we can start this time from in like we can mention any start time and then we can execute it on a set of frequency all right however if you talk about the event based triggers so as it is mentioned by name these event based triggers are responded to a blob related events like a file added or deleted it also works on azure data lake storage as well Okay, so this is a primary difference. Now, if you talk about the second point, so schedule triggers execute a pipeline only as a future event, right? So as we set alarm, we set alarm only for the future time. We cannot schedule, you know, alarm for the last night, the, the night we have already, you know, spent. Similarly, this schedule event work only for the future time. However, in tumbling window trigger, we have an option we can mention any start time. So it says the tumbling window trigger triggers fits when working with a time based data where each data slice has a time same size, right? So it can pass the start time and in time for the each time window into your query and in order to return the data between that start and in time, right? So what it what it is trying to say here is for example, we have a log, right? So th that's the best example actually. So suppose that we have a log and um, that th those logs are being stored on a particular database or maybe some in a table or anywhere. And we want to process that log by the slice of each hour. Now, maybe we are processing a log of last month today, right? So over here, we can set up a pipeline and we can define that periodic time interval using tumbling window trigger and over here we are going to mention a start date which is nothing but a past date and past time for that when that logs were created so we will set up a recurrence and co-currency in the tumbling window trigger and in this way we will be able to process a log based on a time slices of that log for the past date till the present date 
and now if you talk about the event based trigger so azure data factory works on integration with azure event grids which enables data factory to read any such events from the blob storage or azure data lake storage right so it's simply uh, we have an like service or you can say a capability of azure where we it's an azure event grid which allows us to read whatever ha is happening on the storage account and based on any event it will trigger a particular like that trigger and uh, then we can actually execute a pipeline right now the third important uh, difference is that schedule trigger works on many to many relationship so what does it mean it means suppose that we have created one trigger it can execute n number of like multiple pipelines and similarly one pipeline can be executed by multiple triggers all right so this is called many to many relationship in case of triggers and pipelines however in case of tumbling window trigger tumbling window trigger has only one to one relationship with pipelines so with tumbling window trigger we can reference only one or a single pipeline now event based trigger also worked on many to many relationship so similar to schedule trigger we can execute many pipelines using a single um, event based trigger now one advanced feature in tumbling window trigger is that it provides some advanced options like limiting the max co-current tumblings tumbling window running in a parallel and number of retry and retry intervals right so let me show you an example directly on the azure data factory so that we can make it clear what are the differences so let me take you to the portal right right now and uh, let me create a sample pipeline quickly so let's give it as pipeline one i'll just add a copy data now uh, if i go ahead and like click on new trigger choose a new trigger again here you can see uh, first one is schedule and we are getting some like, common options of a star date time zone which is nothing but utc and we can change it accordingly and we can define the uh, recurrence and there are no other advanced option we can optionally provide an end date otherwise like it will keep on running based on the recurrence defined in the trigger when we're talking about tumbling window trigger tumbling window trigger along with these start date option and recurrence we get some advanced options so now what are these options uh, actually these are the added advantages of using tumbling window trigger and these are the differences so delay delay is nothing but the delay before the processing of a window starts so for example we have initiated uh, as i have discussed in the previous video suppose we have initiated a trigger at exactly 5 pm but i want or we want this trigger to wait for a couple of minutes or maybe seconds and then actually execute the pipeline okay so we can define that delay here max co-currency now max co-currency is nothing but uh, because tumbling window trigger can execute multiple pipelines like like same pipeline can be executed by the same trigger multiple times right so uh, let me try to give you an example so suppose we are processing a log of each hour as we just discussed that example now the first log that we process suppose that that is still running and the time has arrived for another log to be executed right so there can be there can be a situation where multiple processings are happening at the same time so just to have a better performance we can define the max co-currency over here for example maybe we want only maximum five co-currencies to be executed at a single point of time okay and so once the earliest started log processing will stop then only it will go with the another one right so there is something we can define here and this option is only available in tumbling window trigger now retry policy so in case pipeline execution has failed due to x y reason then it, how many tr times it should retry we can define that here and what should be the retry interval so maybe it should retry after 30 seconds one minute or like as per the exceptions or you know uh, based on the situation we can define that here now there is one more advanced feature available in uh, uh, tumbling window trigger is dependencies so let me quickly show you that so dependency is nothing but we can add a different trigger as a dependency of this trigger 
right so for example we want this trigger to execute a pipeline only in a situation when a trigger which was supposed to be executed earlier it can be any other trigger maybe a schedule trigger or custom window trigger or this tumbling window trigger itself was supposed to be executed if they are executed successfully then only we want this to be executed so we can define that trigger over here so let me uh, let's remove this as of now and let me just quickly create this as a trigger okay so for example let's we have created one trigger and I'll go ahead and again choose a new trigger and choose the tumbling window trigger go to advanced option and add new dependencies now you can see here I have an option to add that the trigger one that I created earlier and this trigger as well so this trigger two which we are going to execute so when a tumbling window this is an important point when a tumbling window trigger is have a dependency of itself then it is called a self dependency self dependent tumbling window trigger now how how does it happen again let's take the same example uh, for example let's say we are processing a log and uh, we have you know set this tumbling window trigger to execute on every 15 minutes now we want that in case the first 15 minutes log was processed successfully only then another window of 15 minutes will be executed so that is something we can define using this tumbling window trigger and that can be defined using these offset and window size function now what is this for that let me directly take you to the microsoft uh, you know website portal so that it would be more clear over there okay so uh, let's take an example suppose uh, we have set up a dip like we have set up a trigger with a depend like with a time window of one hour so for example from 9 to 10 and then 10 to 11 now we have an option we can set this this trigger B's second interval if it is executed successfully then only we want trigger A to be executed for this time period so this is something called defining the dependency now how can we define that so over here dependencies a is dependent on b right so in this situation we can define with an offset of zero right and now the time slot is similar for both uh, both the triggers right so in this situation there is no need to define uh, any time it's just an offset of zero however in a situation where let's say our trigger is 10 to 11 time period slot is dependent upon trigger B's 9 to 10 time slot in this situation again like A is dependent upon B but the offset should be minus 1 hour and this is something we can define over here either 0 or minus 1 depending upon the situation we have okay so this detailed explanation is given here I'm sh I'll mention this link uh, into the description so that you can have a look similarly we can define the size so size is nothing but the number of hours or the time window of or slot time of the trigger that we are you know setting up so we can define that for example size is a two hour we can define it over here in the window all right so i hope it is giving some sense uh, what are these advanced options and how they work in tumbling window trigger now if you talk about again storage events and this custom custom events they works alike so um, we need to set up this advanced option we need to define the you know azure grid topics and then only we will be able to use them so these are the advanced option and we can define some parameters based on the subscript azure subscriptions storage account we can set up uh, like files and based on any event and these will be triggers so I hope you have got some basic idea what are the difference uh, between these triggers available in Azure Data Factory. So I hope you have liked the content and if you have any questions about the trigger in Azure Data Factory please, please do let me know in the comments. I would love to answer that and if you like the content please do hit the like button and subscribe my channel to stay up to date for any latest video that I upload. 
thank you for your thank you for watching and keep learning have a great day